each one of these cameras could have looked much worse if I just would have matched them all up at f8. The OMD A1 Mark II would have blown out the highlights and I could have easily said, hey, this camera sucks, the dynamic range is terrible, but if you know how to use the tool that you have, you can get a good image. Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look and comparing dynamic range with the new OMD EM1 Mark II compared to the Sony a6500 and the Panasonic G85, which is their kind of newest, latest and greatest 4K micro four thirds camera. Now I just got the OMD EM1 Mark II, quite a mouthful there, uh, camera in. So I've been doing a lot of different tests. Some of these will be published on YouTube um, as I do them like this one. Uh, some are gonna be part of the full review. There's gonna be a nice, detailed review about a month um, after this video and then uh, we're also having a video that's going to be a patreon exclusive it's going to be a first look going out in the field using the camera a nice cool i think entertaining video also informative and we do about 12 videos a year that are patreon exclusives as a thank you for those that support us and make it possible for us to make videos like this one so thank you guys to uh, all the patreons that are out there already and those of you guys are going to sign up um, for li as little as two bucks a month you guys can help us make more videos and higher quality videos in a different tiers uh, there's different perks such as uh, early releases with ads disabled uh, different giveaways exclusive stuff like that uh, downloadable content so all the stuff I'm gonna go over today the footage if you're um, on that tier you guys can download the footage grade it yourself post it up on YouTube with your examples um, all that type of stuff so if you're a part of that already make sure you guys can you know go download check out the footage and see what you guys could do with it now for this video I wanted to take a look at the dynamic range in two different scenarios. The first one is a living room type setup for a real estate shoot. Now, a lot of this, these houses, they have nice large windows. There's a lot of light coming in, but of course, uh, it's really bright outside and it's a lot darker inside. Now, our eyes are absolutely amazing uh, at dynamic range, but these cameras, they're not. You can either expose for the outside or the inside. So we're gonna compare how these cameras do at uh, keeping the highlights. So I'm exposing more for the highlights here and then raising up the shadows and looking at the final image that we get. The second scenario is going to be a headshot scenario where uh, the subject is in the shadows. Uh, in this shot, it's indoors, and then the background is a lot brighter and it's overexposed. Here, we're gonna be exposing mainly for the subject and seeing how much highlights we can retain or bring back uh, from these cameras. Now, in both of these uh, scenarios, I tested these cameras at different exposures. So I would be underexposing, overexposing, exposing properly, and then I actually took a look and found the best image that I can get with each camera. So uh, the settings are different, and this is what you should do. Whatever type of shooting you do, you wanna go out and you wanna test it. This is so important. You don't just wanna go online and ask what other people do or watch YouTube videos like this one and say, hey, oh, he, he overexposed it like this. I'm gonna just do that. No, you wanna see what works best for you. You wanna test out your picture profiles. You wanna see should you be overexposing, underexposing, stuff like that. So one camera can clip the highlights like the OMD EM1 Mark II. It doesn't retain anything um, in the highlights. If you clip it, you get over uh, over 100 on the IRE scale, it's gone. You cannot bring it back. Whereas the 6500, you can bring quite a bit back. The G85, you can bring some back, not as much, but uh, so you wanna figure out what works best for you. And in these shots, I figure out what the best image I can get out of each one of these cameras and that's what I'm gonna to show to you guys. So let's take a look at the first scenario here. Uh, this is the real estate shoot, and what you're looking at is the G85. This is the final image here. Here is the original. So you guys see how much darker the interior was, and we brought that back. Now this is using Cinelike D, which is the best uh, in dynamic range uh, other than V-Log, and it's actually quite close to V-Log with less noise. So you guys see how much that brought back. Now, when we play back the file, look at all this noise here. I don't know what it's gonna look like online, but there's noise everywhere and it is quite distracting. It just dominates the shadows. And let me go. There's just so much noise in the Panasonic footage and Panasonic cameras are just plagued with this. Even properly exposing shots, you have noise in the shadow. So this is an ISO uh, 200 here, but it looks like a good image. And you know, if, if this is the camera you have, and I recommend the G7s, which is very similar to this camera, just without the IBIS and some of the weather ceiling, uh, you can use this image, downscale this 4K to 1080, maybe denoise it a little bit if you want to, and you can get, you know, you could do nice paid jobs 
let's take a look at the Olympus. So we're gonna turn that on. So you guys see, as far as highlight detail, it's similar, and I try to get these to be similar, maybe slightly less. Um, and as far as actual detail, I think there might be a little bit less detail in the image. Let's blow this thing up. But take a look at those shadow areas. They're so much cleaner, and I think by the time this hits YouTube, uh, that noise is gonna get compressed down. Now this is a really good looking image and this is where the Olympus surprised me by how much you can bring up the shadows and how clean the shadows are. Uh, this is a great looking image there. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you the original. So you guys see uh, the shadows were a little bit brighter than they were on the Panasonic. Um, and as you see, when, when I grade it, I do lose a little bit of the outside, not really losing a lot of detail, but it is getting brighter, it doesn't look as good. But this is the kind of the best balanced image in my opinion. So very good, and I'm very surprised by the Olympus in this scenario. Um, I would definitely choose this over the G85. Now let's take a look at Panasonic. So of course the, the OMD EM1 Mark II is about double uh, compared to the Panasonic, and the 6500 is $600 less expensive. So this is Picture Profile 6, so you guys see there. Uh, we're getting a little bit more details in the highlights there. And if you look in the shadows, there's quite a bit more noise here. So take a look, bam, we're killed with noise. Now this was very interesting on the Sony. You guys see all that noise. Uh, the image, it doesn't look, doesn't look great. Uh, so very interesting. Now I wanna show you guys, uh, before I move on to the S-Log, this is picture profile six. Here's the before shot. Yeah, you can pull back a little bit of highlights in the Picture Profile 6, but not much. So uh, dark inside, but this original image here, I think it shows better detail. But when you bring it up, there's a lot of noise. So uh, this is the shot I chose for this video um, as the best image, but it was very interesting. Um, this next clip right here, this is one stop uh, brighter. Just one stop brighter. Take a look at how this plays out. It literally looks noise free. Really sharp, really detailed. And the reason I didn't choose this as the best image, and I almost wanna change my mind, but I don't, is because we are losing uh, more of the exterior. You're seeing blow out, blown out skies. And I'm trying to get the best dynamic range, but this image looks amazingly detailed and clean. Uh, so in an actual shoot, what would I do? Well, I would bring an LED panel, I'd bounce it off the ceiling, I'd uh, make it a little bit brighter on the inside to fill in some of those shadows, and you're gonna get a much better image. So this just shows off how each, each sensor has a point in the IRE scale, where at, say, 40%, if you get right into that 40%, you just get a ton of noise, and then you bring it up to 55, much cleaner, just an insane difference in this camera here. Uh, so that's a 6500 picture profile six. And this is the same thing with the G85. Uh, this is one stop brighter. And I just wanna show you as, as an example, it's a little bit cleaner, but you still see quite a bit of noise. So on the Panasonic, one stop brighter doesn't make that much of a difference. We are still seeing quite a bit of noise in the shadows. Uh, but on the Sony, it just makes a world of a difference. So you gotta know your camera and you gotta know how to use it. So lastly, let's take a look at the S-Log3. Of course, uh, Sony doesn't make you spend an extra $100 or limits you, it gives you S-Log3. Uh, so bam, we're gonna kick that in. So this is Picture Profile 6 versus S-Log3. Uh, take a look at those windows there. We're getting a lot more detail in the highlights. You're actually seeing sky, uh, clouds in the sky. Uh, you're seeing some bluish color in the left window above uh, the next house over. Um, you're getting just you're seeing a cloud with some color there. It's just a lot nicer on the exterior, a lot more details there. And then if you look on the interior, now let's go ahead and play this, noise. <laughs> we do have more noise than the OMD EM1 Mark II. The dynamic range is definitely better, but what would I go for in this scenario, uh, working with these cameras? If I couldn't bring any lights, uh, which is what you would wanna do uh, using Picture Profile 6, would be your best option. Then you can fill it in and get a nice shot. Uh, but the way it is, what camera would I choose in this scenario? It would be the OMD M1 Mark II uh, because you have a good amount of detail in the highlights and you're very clean in the shadows when you bring, uh, bring up the shadows. So this is definitely something I was not expecting. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our second scenario, which is uh, we have 
a headshot. We have a subject, my assistant, standing there in the shade. And then we have a very bright outside. So the first shot you're taking a look at is the G85. And um, so let's go ahead and show you guys the before. So there you go, you see before, it was so blown out outside. Take a look at the building uh, where we have the metal uh, kind of the siding or the covering in the building. We're getting a lot of that detail back. Over here above the white van uh, on this tree, um, we are very blown out. We get some branches back. And I'll go ahead and play this for you guys. And you know, it, it looks pretty good. Uh, not You have noise, of course, but it's not overly noisy. You have a little bit of noise in the face, but it looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I'd want a little bit more contrast in the image, uh, but not bad. Um, this is, of course, you would not want to do this. You would want to put some light on him, lower the exposure outside, even it out, and you could get a nice looking image. Now let's compare this with the, the EM1 Mark II. Let's turn that on. So there you go, guys. It's not a huge difference, but we're seeing more detail in the trees. Uh, we're, we're seeing more lines on the building here. And then take a look at his shirt. Uh, we have a little bit of noise too. It, it looks good. Uh, the detail in his face looks good. There's a little bit of noise, but I think that'll compress out on the internet. Um, so dynamic range wise, once again, the OMD EM1 Mark II beats it, less noisy, more highlight detail. But once again, um, let me bring up this chart here. Take a look at that at 100. It's just anything above 100 is clipped. You don't get anything above 100 where the, on the G85 you do get it and you can bring it back. So here, when we bring out our exposure here, as you see, the highlights are at zero because you can't pull anything back. So um, I selected the best exposure, the best shot out of different exposure values. So um, I think in this one, his face uh, was underexposed by about a stop and that gave us the best amount, uh, you know, best overall image. But if you just go out, you don't know what you're doing, you set the camera to automatic or uh, you figure, I'm just gonna expose this face properly, you're gonna kill all your highlights and you're, they're gone, they're gone. So please learn your cameras, like I, like I say. Okay, let's uh, move this along. I'm gonna keep that open and let's pull out the A6500. So here's the difference. 6500, this is in picture profile one, what I prefer to, to use. Um, you guys see, bam, he's a little bit darker, but look how much more high, highlight detail we have. Uh, look over here at the building, bam, now we're seeing all the lines on the siding there. Uh, you look at the tree, we're seeing individual little branches uh, where this kind of uh, tree shrub thing uh, ends. You're seeing each piece of the branch. Uh, I can. Um, maybe I can make out a little bit of telephone. Yeah, you could t see a little bit of the telephone, um, telephone uh, wiring and the power lines there. The only reason I know it's there is because you'll see the S log three here in a second. Uh, but um, definitely a good improvement. Um, I like the the contrast on the door is better. He's a little bit darker. And let's go ahead and play this now. That looks good. <laughs> That looks really good. Uh, more detailed on his face. Seeing a little bit of noise. I think I'm seeing more noise on his shirt, especially in, in the darker areas. It's more visible. Um, and I think this is just the way that sensor works where uh, just at a certain level of underexposure, you're just plagued with noise. You get just above that and it looks really clean. So you gotta be careful with this camera, not on the highlights because you can pull those back, but in the shadows. Um, but this looks better. This definitely overall better dynamic range, noise levels slightly noisier in the shadows, but the face looks nice and detailed. It looks good. So I'll show you guys the before and after the grade. Here's before, you guys see very dark on his face. His shirt looks almost crushed and the highlights are blown out. Bam, that's how much we brought back. Uh, here on the left side of his face, you see the reflections from the building. You see all those lines in detail. Uh, we take that off. The, all those lines are gone. So quite a, quite a big difference here. Let's take a look at picture profile uh, six. This is what we shot with before, and this is what a lot of people recommend. Um, so here's picture profile six. Compared to picture profile one, what do I see? Well, first thing off, we're losing detail in the highlights on this building. You can see the, the lines are less defined. We're losing detail on that, on that tree or big tree shrub thing that's above the white van. I'm not seeing these individual branches. Losing detail up here, um, losing detail on the left. And at the same time as we're losing detail there, uh, his face is darker. Uh, I think color-wise, it looks worse. And uh, let's go ahead and play this back. I'm um, seeing 
similar levels of no maybe slightly more noise over here on the right side of his shirt. Yeah, I see more color noise there. I see more color noise in his hair in this darker area. Face is similar noise-wise, but here you see picture profile one, which not a lot of people talk about, but that's what I've been using most of this year of, of 2016. Um, we're retaining more details in the, in the highlights. I think the, the color looks better, the skin tones look better, and uh, I think it is less noisy overall, less color noise in it. So um, that, that's a good point. Okay, so if you guys are ready to be shocked right now, let's take a look at S-Log. Bam. <laughs> Bam, right there, I, that is just insane. Uh, Color-wise, it's not perfect. Um, I was looking at dynamic range, not color, uh, but look at this, this is insane. All of a sudden, we're getting a bunch of color in the sky. We're seeing more of this sh uh, tree shrub thing. Um, right here, and where the door is, uh, these, these uh, tree branches were almost completely gone. We got that back. On, on the building, none of these cameras or none of these shots, you could see the individual bolts that hold the metal siding down. Now, bam, we have a lot of detail there. We're seeing those individual bolts. Um, we're seeing these individual power lines right over here. We're seeing individual power lines uh, right up top here. There's just so much detail here. The tree is almost blown out except for this one line. We're getting all this detail over here. Um, it just looks really good. <laughs> this just looks really good. And let's take a look here. Now, uh, we do have noise here. I mean, I think there's a little bit more noise in the face. I don't know how this is gonna look on YouTube, but a little bit more noise in the face. Uh, we do have a little bit noise in the deepest shadows, uh, but on the brighter side, we're, we're a little bit uh, more, more similar to the other Sony picture profiles. Uh, but overall, this looks good. Once again, with S-Log, uh, you wanna, first you wanna denoise it, and then you want to sharpen it, um, and it's, it's going to look good. But S-Log does take a lot more time. So this is what the S-Log looked like before and after, before and after. Uh, once again, this was the best S-Log shot. I think in this shot, his face was uh, one and two-thirds stops overexposed on the bright side of his face. The dark side of his face was about... Um, one stop overexposed, I believe. So that gave us the best image. So you wanna know what you're doing. I don't know if I've said that enough. So let's take a look at, so I'm gonna turn off the Sony picture profiles. So here's the difference of the S-Log3 compared to the OMD EM1 Mark II. OMD EM1 Mark II, which did better than Panasonic, bam. I mean, that is a huge difference. Uh, I think the OMD is, it's cleaner, his shirt is cleaner. Uh, his face, yeah, his face is cleaner too. Uh, of course, you do get more noise. Uh, S-Log2 is less noisy, um, but I didn't want to make this video a one-hour video going, ever, going over everything and giving my commentary that people ask for. Uh, but look at that. And my biggest thought is um, if I even had a reflector bouncing some of that light just onto his shirt, that would mean the, sh the value, the IRE values of the shirt are going to be brought up. It's gonna get out of that noise zone, and just that would make it a good image. A little bit more light on his face, and man, this is insane what this Sony camera can do. So you guys could tell the difference there. Right there, bam, that's with the Olympus. It's pretty shocking. The image is more detailed, and the good thing about having a detailed image is uh, when your image is detailed, you can throw in some noise reduction like neat video, and reduce some of that noise, and when you reduce noise, you do reduce detail, but having that much more detail means you still have a nice image after noise reduction, where when you have a soft image, it just gets worse afterwards. Uh, so hopefully this information has been helpful to you guys. I think the biggest takeaway um, that I just, I've said it, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight times already is test out your cameras and the situations that you put them through, find what works best for you, and use that. Um, each one of these cameras could have looked much worse if I just would have matched them all up at f8, uh, 150th, ISO 200, shot it. Um, the OMD Alien Mark II would have blown out the highlights, and I could have easily said, hey, this camera sucks. Can, the dynamic range is terrible. That's it. Uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't bring back the highlights whatsoever. But if you know how to use the tool that you have, you can get a good image, and here it's, uh, for this specific shot, it's in second place, 
And for the interior shot, I would probably even say first place or tied um, for you know overall dynamic range. I think we got first place, but if uh, if we just looked at the best image with slightly overexposing the exterior a little bit more, the Sony would have won. So um, I just think I'm very impressed by the OMD EM1 Mark II. You got to know how to use your tools. So if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer. And once again, hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our full detailed review of this camera. We have much more to test out. And if you guys are interested in seeing that first look uh, field view review type of video, you guys can sign up on Patreon. That will uh, be posted soon. Most likely by the time you're watching this, it's already up there. Thank you guys, uh, all the patrons for your support. And we will see you guys in the next video.